Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina-san requested a video that covers orchids which bloom for a long time. As a disclaimer, let me just add that bloom duration can be influenced by the following temperature, humidity, precipitation and airflow, as well as pest issues, should pests have had a go at the spikes and buds. Also, the perception of long-lasting blooms is different for everyone, so my interpretation of long-lasting is four weeks and longer, taking into consideration that the blooms look pristine for the duration of the blooming until they start to fade. In my opinion, any orchid that blooms less than a month, that is normal and can be expected. So, this video is the first episode covering which orchids I have grown, past and present. Orchids that I have had the pleasure of seeing the blooms and monitor the bloom duration based on my climate, which is warm for 80% of the year and then too cold during the winter, with an annual humidity average of 30% including intense and prolonged airflow and little to no precipitation during the months in which my orchids grow outdoors. Know that if you have more favorable conditions, what I state as bloom duration could be even longer for you should you choose to include these orchids in your collection or possibly you already grow them. Welcome to the video. Thank you so much for clicking on it. Hope you enjoy what you see and that it inspires you with the orchid shopping season in full swing at the time of filming. Oh, and if you have experience with any orchids you are growing and can vouch for their blooms to last four plus weeks, then please share those in the comments. To keep this video at a reasonable length, I am going through my database and will cover orchids from A through D, including a brief care breakdown for each of them. So for this episode, if you grow anything starting with A through D as per the genus, please share your take with the rest of us. I appreciate you. Starting with A for Ancelia Africana. These orchids bloom in spring. They have a temperature tolerance of 5 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius and will bloom in late winter, early spring for the most part. The blooms last a good eight weeks. Their fragrance ranges from sweet to musky, dusty, sandy with a hint of sugar to them. I grow mine in southern Spain and they are able to tolerate direct sun all year round. So definitely a highlight orchid in order to get a satisfying bloom show. I find them easy to grow and appreciate their vigor and the time of year when they bloom. A beautiful, smaller growing bandaceous orchid is Ascacentrum ampuyathea. These bloom late winter, early spring. Their temperature tolerance is 12 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. The blooms last a good six weeks and while not fragrant, they are reliable without needing anything special to bloom. Where I am at, I keep mine out of direct sun, but they are constantly exposed to high light in form of bright shade. The Brassavola genus for the most part has surprisingly long lasting blooms as well. I grow the Subulifolia, the Flagellaris, the Tuberculata and the Perinii. In my climate, they have to tolerate temperatures down to 14 degrees Celsius with the exception of the Perinii, which I cannot bring indoors. That one has to deal with low temperatures down to 5 degrees Celsius, but when temperatures drop that low, I cover it with a thick towel to take the edge off the cold air. It works, but is not advisable. Ideally, you do not want to expose your Brassavolas to temperatures lower than 18 degrees Celsius, and then when it comes to the heat, obs your uncle, because they love it nice and toasty. Brassavolas need a lot of light, and depending on the strength of your sun, they can take direct sun if it doesn't risk burning the leaves. The blooms last a good seven weeks, and across the board, they have a delightful fragrance of lemon powder sugar with a kick of the citrus essential oils as a touch of depth. And depending which type of Brassavola you are growing, they bloom either early fall or late winter or early spring. And then of course the bloom duration expands into the following months of the same time of year. As far as Catacetinae are concerned, I can only speak on the long bloom duration of the Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. The highly fragrant blooms will last for six weeks. No problem at all. The fragrance I pick up from mine is a delicious gingerbread cookie dusted with cinnamon sugar, and that fragrance will fill a large room with ease. Mine blooms midwinter. Sometimes that can be within December through to January or January through to February. And this orchid is exposed to super high light during the months of active growth, and then it has to deal with gloomy indoor conditions. But at that point, it is going dormant anyway, so the blooms come regardless. 
The temperature range that I can vouch for working out well for this orchid is 14 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius without the leaves burning during the warm, dry months of the year. However, higher humidity of 70% and up is preferred so that the leaves don't burn at the tips due to the lack of humidity. Coming into the Cattleya Alliance, my Cattleya Dinard Blue Heaven represent. <laughs> it has a bloom duration of four weeks, accompanied by a wonderful, elegant rose fragrance. There is no musky note to that rose fragrance. It has a light lemon note to enhance the fragrance of the rose scent, making it ever so fresh and just divine. This orchid tolerates 14 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius and has continuous high light throughout the growing season. It usually blooms in October and into November depending on when the buds open. I find this one to be a super reliable bloomer with the exception of after a repot. Mine did not bloom for us the year after its repot. So fingers crossed for 2024. It's not too late. <laughs> Cattleya Iricolor surprised me with the first blooms that easily lasted five weeks. Their waxy texture was interesting and I've heard mixed reactions to the fragrance leading up to mine blooming for the first time. What I picked up with my Iricolor was the fresh fragrance of the classic Dove body wash. I was happily surprised and even more surprised just how long the blooms lasted. I give my Iricolor a lot of bright shade during the growing season and then hope for the best during the low light conditions of the winter months. Her temperature range here with me is 14 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Whether she is a reliable bloomer, now that mine is blooming size, remains to be seen. But as she is already busy with two new growths, I have hope that at least one of the new growths will bloom again for us during the month of June through July in the next go around. Catliantha White Bridal is another wonderful orchid that comes with highly fragrant blooms which permeates the air with a gardenia lemon combo fragrance. Surprisingly, this bifoliate keeps its blooms for five weeks in my dry climate. This orchid is exposed to bright shade during the growing season, and if it is an active growth during the winter months, which can happen, then I try to position it as close to the glass for maximum light, depending on what the weather offers during those months. I find it to be a super reliable bloomer and vigorous in its growth habit with most new growths blooming out. The temperature mine has to tolerate is 14 degrees Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, not because the single bloom duration is long lasting, but because Sologeny Lime Bay blooms on a sequential spike I am including this orchid in this list because while the individual bloom may last a week, in my case, the fact that it is a sequential bloomer, I have had this orchid in bloom for almost 20 months at one point because the spikes were producing a total of 13 blooms back to back. Its fragrance is not exactly what makes this a must have because it smells like a dusty room that is in need of fresh air. The orchid would prefer humidity levels at 70% and higher to avoid the leaf tips from turning brown, but it is temperature tolerant down to 14 degrees Celsius and up to 35 degrees Celsius. The lack of humidity though will do a number on this orchid, just something to keep in mind. I have mine in semi-shade as I do not let it grow outdoors ever. The conditions are too harsh in my climate. Mine does not see any direct sun ever and still blooms. So if you want something that is around doing its thing and you can enjoy the blooms months on end, then this orchid is definitely a great candidate for that criteria. Dendrobium antenatum is another amazing species. It's an antelope type dendrobium that once in bloom doesn't seem to stop blooming. It comes with a wonderful honeysuckle fragrance, which is always welcome during the first bloom flush, which happens in my climate during late winter. And then again, during summer, another flush of spikes gives the impression that this orchid is in bloom all the time. Each bloom lasts four weeks easily. So it goes to show just how much of a giver this orchid is. While it prefers temperatures no lower than 18 degrees Celsius, mine does tolerate lows down to 14 degrees Celsius, as long as it is exposed to high light during the winter months. While it is a warm to hot grower, this orchid has its limits and needs to be protected from the intense heat in a dry climate. On those occasions, protect it from direct sun and keep it in bright shade, and that will still be plenty of light for it to bloom. 
Dendrobium berry odor has been a favorite of mine on the patio. Now, we wait for another couple of years until we have a similar size orchid again, but this is a reliable bloomer with a bloom duration of three months from late winter into mid and spring. The fragrance is intense as well. The honeysuckle with heavy molasses scent easily fills a room, an outdoor space, wherever the orchid is, and you do not even see it, you will know that she is in bloom. Mine tolerates a temperature range of five degrees Celsius all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius and is exposed to bright shade all year round. Some direct sun during the winter, but for the most part, bright shade and still it used to bloom like clockwork and I highly recommend this easy to grow and wonderful performer of an orchid. If you cannot source a berry odor specifically, look for the alternative called Jonathan's Glory. Without having the two next to each other, I cannot tell the difference and based on what I have heard about the berry odor counterpart, the growth habit of Jonathan's Glory with the blooms and the fragrance and the care is all exactly the same. Dendrobium cerraula is a smaller growing dendrobium and possibly not as easy to find, but we are here for bloom duration and this species dendrobium is just insane. It's a beautiful smaller growing orchid with a bloom duration of six weeks. While the blooms are not fragrant, once mine gets established again, I am looking forward to allowing it to bloom out for as long as it wants. This one, however, is a bit of an aphid attractor and mealybugs could possibly also search out the buds while they are forming. I also had the unfortunate experience with a thrips attack. The best way I could deal with the thrips at the time of year this orchid is also in bloom is to just remove all the affected leaves and at night mist the canes carefully with garlic alcohol while avoiding the blooms. Speaking of avoiding the blooms, if they come in contact with water, the markings and colorations on the lip will wash together and leak into each other. That is the only downside with this orchid. The blooms are super vulnerable to coming in contact with water and mine tolerates the temperature range of 5 degrees Celsius Celsius all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius. And of course we cannot have a video like this without talking about Dendrobium hibiki. This primary hybrid is insane for its incredible long bloom duration. I have had mine in bloom for five months in the past and all that time none of the blooms that opened first had faded. Once the blooms open, they look pristine for the entire duration of the bloom period. This orchid, while not fragrant, is an absolute machine. It's a high performer, it is super reliable and well, all in all, a joy to grow. Mine gets bright shade for the most part and tolerates temperatures between 14 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. The only pests I have seen trying to make a move on this orchid are aphids, but that has only happened once since I've grown this orchid. With the blooms being in such a tight cluster, it is important to check closely to see if there are any other pests hiding because those will shorten the bloom duration. While I do not have this orchid anymore, I loved it when it was around and this is Dendrobium gyrac horn. It should not be exposed to temperatures lower than 20 degrees Celsius, but can take the heat really, really well. It is a hybrid that exhibits antelope type behavior and the blooms show that in spades. The blooms lasted six weeks without any signs of fading and I used to grow it in bright shade all year round. That includes the indoor supplemented lighting back in the day during the winter. This orchid does not appreciate the cold temperatures for any length of time and will shed its leaves if it gets any influx of colder conditions. While beautiful and long lasting, the blooms are not fragrant. It's a wonderful addition, however, to the orchids that bloom from August through to September. A cutie with long-lasting blooms that are beautifully fragrant is Dendrobium kingianum. Once this species has its grow on, it can turn into a large orchid with a lot of flower spikes and a bloom show for six weeks easily. I have stopped my kingianum from blooming out in its own timing because mine is still young and I would like to get it established a little more before letting it do its thing. Gorgeous honeysuckle fragrance though with a note of heavy molasses is a welcome fragrance during February through March. Just when we in the Northern Hemisphere 
have had enough of the winter. This orchid does its thing to lift our spirits. Mine tolerates temperatures as low as 5 degrees Celsius and as high as 40 degrees Celsius while it lives in bright shade during the warmer months and then gets exposed to direct winter sun for the remainder of the year. Still within the Dendrobium section, but well worth a mention, is Dendrobium lutein blanc. Goodness me, this orchid is amazing. Also, such a welcome sight during the winter months as it first opens its blooms in January and then the room is full of heavy sugar burnt molasses fragrance for three months. This orchid just blows my mind. To have such a beautiful fragrance around while the winter is still harsh plus the funky gnarly blooms, it's a wonderful experience and has carried my spirits many many years in a row. January and February are the worst months for the orchids and I, but then this little one comes in clutch. I'm so grateful for it and cannot recommend it enough. The only thing to be careful of is aphids. They don't have much to feed on during the months when it is in bloom and it can happen that at the very early stages of this orchid coming to spike, which by the way, the spikes grow agonizingly slow, but the aphids will find the spikes, so be aware that can happen and protect against an outbreak. Mine tolerates temperatures down to 5 degrees Celsius and has survived 40 degrees Celsius for several days, all the while being in bright shade with a lot of airflow. Direct sun exposure can happen during the winter based on the angle of the sun, not because I make a conscious effort of putting it into the sun, it's just the angle of the sun does it for me automatically and it can handle that. It's just a fun, reliable and welcome little primary hybrid. I love it, I recommend it. Dendrobium nafrits Alex Pauli also never disappointed me when it came to long-lasting blooms. With a sweet but mild fragrance, the bloom show lasts for eight weeks without any issues. This orchid is reliable and blooms like clockwork as well, starting January through March. Another one that is a lot of help when it comes to getting through the nasty winter months. The fact that it tolerates temperatures down to 14 degrees Celsius with lower light levels indoors makes this orchid even more remarkable for how it performs when it blooms. During the warmer months of the year, this orchid is exposed to bright shade, rarely getting any direct sun. One thing though, in my conditions, I have to ward off thrips. It seems like I have a thrips attack no matter how well I try to preventatively treat the leaves and the structures against pests, specifically thrips. Still, despite the damage to the leaves, this orchid is holding her own. Then, I can only speak on the Dendrobium nobly complex hybrids when it comes to the longevity of the blooms. Highly fragrant, mine smells of freesias, and the blooms last for four months without looking as if they are fading in any way, shape or form. It's a super reliable bloomer and I would not want to be without it because of the time of year it blooms. Usually from mid-March through to June, my No ID nobly makes spring truly spring. And as the air warms up a bit, the fragrance becomes even more intense. So this orchid lives in bright shade to full sun on the patio, full sun during the winter months, and it blooms like clockwork. It tolerates temperatures as low as 5 degrees Celsius and as high as 40 degrees Celsius, but when it gets that hot, <coughs> this orchid definitely needs to be in the shade or else everything will burn. Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga is another orchid that has super long-lasting blooms. While I had this orchid in my collection, I thoroughly enjoyed seeing her wonderful blooms during the months of April through to July, on the rare occasion that I did let her bloom out in her own time. The following years I cut the bloom duration short because goodness me, this orchid can give you the impression that she is fake. That is how long she blooms. While not fragrant, and well, she appears to be a bit shy because the blooms face downwards, it's a wonderful dendrobium to grow in the right conditions, also super reliable and vigorous. I do not have that environment for this orchid anymore, but if you can give it temperatures no lower than 20 degrees Celsius with good light all year round, you have yourself a blooming and growing machine. Unfortunately, this dendrobium also had an affinity of attracting thrips in my conditions, and she's not as robust as the Nafert's Alex Poli, so my conditions deteriorated for her, which weakened her, and she is no longer in my collection. And wow, we. <laughs> The Dendrobium I can highly recommend. Oh, I love me a species orchid that not only comes with a delicious fragrance, but add to that long lasting blooms and well, 
it's a must-have. Dendrobium Unicum ticks all the boxes. She smells of Tangerine Body Mist Spray. <laughs> it's so fresh and she is not shy with her fragrance either. Her blooms easily last two months on an orchid that does not even have to be established. I cannot say good enough things about this orchid, so if you have listening between the line skills, then now is the time to use them. This Dendrobium blooms as from end of May until end of July in my climate. No pests, no thrips, no nada, just a wonderful reliable bloomer that when timing is right and things work out, blooms at the same time as the Dendrobium Victoria Regina, which I have to include here because while not fragrant, the Victoria Regina blooms last four to five weeks. How long they would last in a high humidity environment, I cannot say, so if your Victoria Regina blooms for longer, then let us know in the comments. However, for my conditions, I'm thrilled to be able to add the Victoria Regina into this video because wow, just wow. There is a bonus when it comes to this orchid, which the Unicum does not have, and that is once a Victoria Regina is established, she will push out buds over several months, giving the impression that she is in bloom all the time. During the months of August through October, however, there are no buds on the move, and then she starts back up again midwinter. Both the Unicum and Victoria Regina are reliable bloomers, but the Unicum will only bloom once per 12 month growth cycle with a fragrance, which the Victoria Regina does not have. But both orchids tolerate temperatures down to 5 degrees Celsius and have to, while they may not like it, but have to deal with highs up to 40 degrees Celsius. Ideally, you want to keep the humidity above 70% for both of these orchids to grow really, really well. And with these two final dendrobiums that I can speak on, I will end this first episode of orchids that have long-lasting blooms. Stay tuned for the second episode, and in order not to miss out when that airs, please subscribe to the channel, as well as, if you would be so kind as to give the video a thumbs up, share it around, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you Orchid Ninja Samurai Nina-san for the request. We're not done yet. There are more recommendations to come, so I look forward to seeing you in that video or any other video you choose to watch. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Have yourself a wonderful day on the condition that you stay safe. Please take care. Bye.